Spence Lewis here. We're back with the Bench Racing Series. This is volume number 12, and I'm here with... I'm amongst prestigious company <laughs> right now. To my left, I have the first family of Ontario short track racing, representing the Lucas Oil Sportsman Cup Series. I guess for a little bit, for a little while longer, driver of the number 16 car, it is Amanda Conley, making his third bench racing appearance. You're a man of the people. They've requested that you come <laughs> back. We've, we've booked you again. It is none other than the crowd pleaser, Kelly Balson, multi-time Peterborough Speedway track champion. How many track championships you got here? Uh, five. Five. We are on location at Peterborough Speedway. Five championships under his belt. Very impressive. And Mossport. And and how many at Mossport? Just one. And just one at Mossport. And so. you're a crew chief for one, too. And a crew chief for a chance. <laughs> just the, true, the list yeah. of accomplishments is too long to even include. To my right, making his first career bench racing appearance, former Summer Sizzler champion, part-time racer on the ACT Tour, won the final night at Peterborough Speedway in 2013. It is none other than the Silverback, Brian Mercer, owner of one of the best nicknames in short track racing, if I do say so myself. <laughs> now, the, the, one, the one common denominator I have across these three drivers is they all started in the Thunder Car division. Now, granted, many moons ago, they're all very successful uh, late model drivers uh, right now. But going back to the old days, I mean, we'll start with you. I know you got your, your, you got your start, Sunset Speedway in yep. the Thunder Car division. Now, put me in the time machine here. What what season, what year are we at? Your, your first year in a Thunder Car. Uh, well, I, I rented a car from Bob Finnamore twice in 98. And then I bought my own in 99 was my rookie year. So, you're, did you have a go-kart background or you're just a second Can't generation driver? No, no. yeah, I... I I started stealing the car when I was about 12, so... So you were ready. You were yeah, training. No, yeah, yeah, you got it. So were you, you were still in your teens then when you, when yeah, you started I, with I the Thunder Cars? Yeah, I was 18 the first time in a, in a Thunder Car. So you're, you're, at, you're at the Speedway for your first full season. So after you've, after you've done yep. rented the car from Bob Finnamore, now you've got your own yep. chassis. Where did that car come from? That was uh, Frank Davies' championship car from 98. So you started right off the bat with good equipment. Yep. Now you were racing against some of, some of the best drivers oh, yeah. at the time who yeah. were some of the top dogs at sunset when you were when oh, you were first breaking into the then, division um rick watson um kent constable uh well kyle donaldson came in 2000 <laughs> joe whitaker of course oh my goodness i can't forget him <laughs> he <laughs> won't be let terrible. you forget that that would be terrible be first, joe would not be happy <laughs> first guy i ever hit and first guy i ever pissed off <laughs> was joe whitaker and he it was scary <laughs> really being a 19 year old girl and having Joe Whitaker stomping down your pit, and we're just like, oh God, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it was scary. But yeah, I'm trying to remember. I think that was... Mark Adams. Yeah, Mark Adams is a good runner, yeah, for sure. I would say Mark Adams is probably the best Thunder Car driver to have never won a championship. Did he not? Yeah, I don't no, think Mark he, ever... He came so within a hair's breadth he was a always lot of times. Top, top he was five. always five there. Guy, yeah. I mean, you want to talk about a guy that was as technically sound a Thunder Car racer as anybody in the province, and he just always was right there not able to seal the deal. Now, back to your first year in the Thunder Car. What, what were some of the first lessons, maybe hard lessons, oh, you, you learned in the Thunder Car division? Because we're going all the way back oh, with this one. Oh, my goodness. I, you know, I would, oh, I was so naive. I remember, like, a couple of the first practices I ever did. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the back street, and during the day, I was doing great by myself, and I went out with the other cars, and... They split me on the back straight away, and it was a, I swear, Talladega Nights moment, like, was that the other cars? Like, oh my god. <laughs> um, I looped it in my first heat. Kept going, by the way. No caution. No caution. No, no caution. lay and pray. No, no. <laughs> um, I definitely had, that. see, when I first started, we weren't on the slick like they are now. We were on, like, a street tire, like a BF Goodrich street tire. So, you could spin the tires really, really easily, and, you know, they those cars probably back then had, like, you know, 280 horse or something like that, probably. Uh, I really had to learn, like, you had to warm up the rubber a little bit, because I just push it to the floor, and I'm hitting people, Joe Whitaker, in the side, and damn near sticking people in the wall, and i never driven a race car before. Thunder car is where you started to learn, so, yeah, just, just things like that. <laughs> Everything kind of happened to me, so. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to save you for, for last for this question, just don't <laughs> think I forgot about you, because I didn't, I promise. Go away. So, okay, what year would would uh, would, would uh, were you little at that point? Because you're huge now. Were you ever small? No, he's that uh, size. He's always been huge the entire yeah. time. The so height, what, the height's always the been height's there. always been there. Okay, so you're you're the, a, a big kid breaking yeah. the Thunder Car division. First off, what speedway are we at? Peterborough. You we started at Peterborough. Peterborough. Yep. 
Okay, so what year, what year would that be? I think it was 96. 96? Yeah, 96, yeah, 96 97, 96. something like that. So what got you interested in, uh, in putting a, a car together, or at least putting a program together, to come to Peterborough Speedway and, and make 1996 your rookie year? I grew up around racetrack. My dad uh, raced at Brayton Speedway uh, for years, and uh, when he quit, we kept going. And then uh, we stopped going to Brayton and started coming up here when it was Westgate, and uh, my cousin and I came here every Saturday night, and finally it was time to give her a go. So I uh, went to my mom and dad and said, asked dad if he'd be interested in helping me, and he said he wasn't sure. <laughs> and the story is, is when I walked out the door and closed the door, my mom said to him, what do you mean you're not sure? And he said, I'm just messing with him. We're going to do it. So, and I guess 18 years now. You got to love wow. ra racing dads and non-committal answers. That's just what <laughs> <laughs> racing's built on the parents and their non-committal answers. Like, yeah, we might do that. Yeah. We could, maybe, you never know. So, all right, so you, you put a car, is, now is this, is this a, a backyard project? You put it together with your dad, or did you guys go um, out and get a, a proven chassis? It, it was a, I saw a car for sale on a classifieds board at a grocery store in Port Hope, <laughs> in Roseneath. I didn't know that. Yeah, and I went and bought it for, I don't know what it was, dirt cheap. And I took it to Dale Ridge, a guy that uh, raced Thundercar at the time up here, and uh, wanted him to clean it up, get it race ready for me, and uh, a week later he phoned me and told me that it was no good. <laughs> the cage was no good, it had a CSC cage kind of roughly welded in it, and uh, he redid the whole thing. And, and we went from there, and I think we were like sixth in the points that season, won one feature. So it, uh, and that was when there was like 30, what, 35, 40 cars. Oh, yeah. In the Thunder cars? Yeah. In the Thunder car class, yeah. there was 17 yeah. the B main. Yeah, so uh, we had a Actually, a pretty good first season. So now, how how old were you at the time? I think 20, 21. 21. So I wasn't really young. Well, like I wasn't. In not like they are now. Yeah, no, exactly. you're, you weren't Caden Lasovich, yeah. 12 years old, no, exactly. getting into a uh, exactly. into, into well, a Thunder car. I, mean, I was a kid when I started at 18. Yeah, absolutely. Like crazy. That, that's what I'm getting at. Like nowadays, you know, kids are starting when they're 12, 13, 14. Yeah. So yeah, it's but a yeah. different dig. Yeah. Do, you, do you remember taking away my first Autumn Colors Classic heat win in Thundercar? Her first heat Her, win? My first heat win. Really? Brian passed me on the last lap in Craig Graham's in car. Craig Graham's car, because yeah. Because Craig's wife went into labor. Yeah. And I was like, that was a late model guy. That we took, a, we took a lot of heat for that. <laughs> now, is that Craig Graham's wife going into labor with Brant Graham, who's currently racing uh, Minisock? I think. Because that would just be beautiful. We could tie all was that together. Was it Brant or was it Well, Brandt it would have been 99. Blair. So, Blair. no, it would have been Brant. I think it was Brant. It was Brant. It was I'm sure first. it was Brant. Well, there you go. That's an autumn colors <laughs> moment that we just reminisced over. It, it was touching. It was beautiful. Steve, I loved it. Steve Slaughter was not happy with us. Really? Yeah, because we didn't let anybody know that I was driving the car. No, Rob, we were part of that whole show. You, you had to go. Hot. Rob Glanville. Oh, he, was, he, he, went, he went crazy. Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of unhappy people. I didn't realize Amanda was I didn't happy complain. Until now. I no. Just but, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was kind of a fun deal, actually. It was. I'd never even driven the car before. So. How, many, it, how many seasons did you put in in the Thunder Car Division at, three. at Peterborough? Three. So just three years, and then you moved up to Challenger. Challenger. So, what was the first hard lesson you learned in the Thunder Car Division? This is a good question because nobody ever really wants to talk about the first mistakes they made. What was the first hard lesson you learned in the Thunder Car at Peterborough Speedway as a 21-year-old rookie? I can't remember. I honestly can't. I don't. Uh, uh, I don't know that you had a rough go. I think things no, went pretty pretty it, smooth. It went for you. really smooth, really smooth uh, until, and it might have been my. It was my last year at Thunder Car. We uh, wrecked hard at the Autumn Colors. Like typical case of me trying too hard, but. I got hooked into the outside wall in the back straightaway and rode it with a hard lick. But other than that, it was pretty much painless for three years. And then into Challenger, and Kelly and I ran 1-2 a lot of the time. Again, not a lot of pain. <laughs> and then late model. That's when uh, um wasn't really ready for late model, but had people willing to put some money out and jump right into it, and it was ugly. So first year in late, <laughs> first year in late model would have been what? What year would that would have been? Um, oh one, oh two, and was that also at Peterborough or? Uh, we we went right into All Star, right into All Star. Yeah. See, yeah. all right, I'm getting a history yeah. lesson here. I did Dan not know Dan that. Dan McCaddy built us a car, um, and it just didn't know anything about it. You know, we we were bad everywhere other than here. And the two All Star races here, the first one we led for seventy laps or something, and got spun out. 
Yep. Um, was it not you Glenn and Kurt Schner. got together? No, or it was Glenn uh, Schner. Schner, yeah. And it wasn't a bad deal. It no, was, it wasn't he, a bad deal. It, right, was, right. it, was, it was, I was crowding them on the inside, and you know, and then the second time back at Peterborough, we uh, had half a track lead and broke a ramp. So, I mean, you know, it, it is what it is, and then there was a few years of just, it was bad. You know, we didn't have the money, didn't have the know-how. Um, you know, Dan built us a good car. We just didn't know how to work on it. You know, it just that was what it was. Like, I mean, if we got a, had another Dan car now, I'm sure we could make it go fast. I'm not saying we're the smartest group in the pits, but we could make it go. So, so it's interesting to hear from, from Brian that the growing pains didn't start until later in his career when he when he sort of jumped into the late model division and he was sort of hitting the, the problems that any rookie normally experiences. Now, I know you've been around a while. I'm not calling you old. You're still spry. You're still young. But you've been around a little while. I mean, as long as I've been going to the Speedway, I've known spry. the name Kelly Balson. Spry. He's spry. spry. Have you ever seen him run? He can run pretty quickly. <laughs> like a deer. Like, exactly. He just, he's out there jogging 6 a.m. every day. You know, he's a, he's a machine. He's fit. So, going back to your first days in the Thunder Car, did you have the Amanda experience where, where you learned rough, right out right out of the box you were learning things the hard way or did you have the natural superstar brian mercer <laughs> career where, where you didn't really have a tough lesson until you know five six seven years into into your driving career to be perfectly honest with you i don't know that i ever got schooled until i was in a late model at uh Kawartha. things went pretty smooth in mm -hmm. in uh in thunder car we did some winning and our first year was at the old track here before the track you see before you today and it was the old quarter mile, no wall in the back straight. If you sailed off the back straight, you're down by the pond and you gather back up and you reemerge <laughs> into the field somewhere. And then the uh, the next year was when Kim uh, built the new track you see now. And whatever happened there, whether maybe the light bulb went on for me, I don't know, or they built the track designed for the car that I had, that next year we won everything in sight at this track in the uh, in the in the thunder car moved pretty seamlessly into uh challenger and then uh a little bit later like a, one year later we got a uh ram chassis which is a rod marshall chassis which is the guy that taught mccaddy everything he needs to know and mm -hmm. so that's a little history lesson and rod yeah. marshall's the king of the world that's we both we had. had rod marshall both challenger had rod marshall now this is goes back now things started to happen at that time where we started to get Ward chassis into the Challenger division. We were just talking about it. And yeah, we were just talking about that outside. And uh, things started to happen where guys purpose-built... Uh, who's is that? Who's that? I'm going to pour a Tortorella moment. Look out. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's a Tortorella moment. This, this, this is professional. This is uh, mini-stock superstar <laughs> Brandon McFerrin uh, wanting to FaceTime me. So thanks, Brandon, for... <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to throw this off screen to, to country grammar, Graham Annis, and apologize. For, see, this is, why, this is why Fox Sports won't pick this program up, because of things like this. Brandon McFerrin wants to FaceTime me. I'm sure it was important. He's 14. Like, I think if you, if you FaceTime with a 14-year-old, I think i got to put my name on a special list somewhere. No, Brandon, I don't want to FaceTime with you right now. You interrupted Kelly Balson. Which is fine. That's That's... Unforgivable. That's fine. You were <laughs> sorry. You were saying. Well, we both had Ram Ram chassis, and much like say Junior used to do, where he used to put a JR in his chassis. Ram Rod Marshall. I'm assuming his middle name was Allen or something to that effect. But Ram chassis was on the frame rail, and we had I had one, Merce had one, and we had great cars. And then we started traveling around <coughs> the countryside, and guys would come to Peterborough mm -hmm. clearly. And they had Ward chassis and fill-in-the-blank chassis, and we were the only barn-built chassis yep. that could compete. They didn't like it. Well, I don't know if they liked it or not, but I know that I was proud to have a car that was yep. built in a barn. I still do, by the way. Um, DMR, Dan yeah. well, race cars all the way. Nice barn, by the way. Very nice. Radiant heating in a barn. <laughs> However, still a barn. However, uh, he, Rod taught uh, Dan most he needed to know like to start off with the jig that Dan had was Rod's yep. jig and we had those cars and they were rocket ships didn't and matter so, where you went no we were we rocket were just ships talking about it. We, you'd go to well, well, we, went to, we went to Cayuga for an invitational my rookie season and, and uh, finished second to Morrill and at the time Morrill was 
the man in yeah. Challenger. Yeah. Yeah. He, and he he out of the car and who are you? Didn't know who I was. Yeah. yeah sure. and, and it didn't matter where you went. You didn't change very little changing of spring shocks, just adjust the sway bar a bit and go. Mm -hmm. Try zero. Yeah. Zero change. Really, yeah. Just show up and hold the spring. Best. Yeah, leaf spring. Yours was leaf spring? Yeah. So what year did you make your, de your, your debut in a, in a Thunder car? To sort of, we're following the pattern here. 92. 92? Yeah. Okay. And they redid Peterborough in 93. Three. Okay. Yeah. All right. So so you're you're an old school Peterborough guy. It's getting there. It's been around a little while. A while. A couple of years. A few. Now, going back to, to when you were first making your mark mm -hmm. in the Thunder car division, because towards the end of your run in, in Thunder car, you were, I mean, if there was a provincial ranking system, you would have been right near the top you won a lot of big races and, yeah. and you competed everywhere you went oh, yeah. you you were a yeah. contender mm -hmm. who would you point to as as one of your early mentors that sort of brought you up to speed and and got you running amongst that uh, that top tier that top tier group in the thunder car division uh ken donaldson for sure absolutely um after my engine blew in 2000 um they had two cars there and they were pit beside us and they always ran strong clearly and uh, Ken said you know I was upset I was crying <laughs> well, my engine blew you know I was 20 um, and it know. feels like the death blow well it does because and I felt like that it, it's over now because where do I get five grand from or four grand to, to fix this now and Ken said come up to the fence and said you know stop it come down here we're gonna we're gonna put you in this car and I said well, Ken, I'm, I'm not going to fit in that car. He said, we will make you fit in that car. <laughs> and we had his wife, Sandy, I, I, I don't know if it was phone books or I don't know, something underneath the seat, blankets. Um, they took uh, hose clamps and hose clamped um, like a piece of wood to the gas pedal. <laughs> so that, get foot up higher into so, the pedal? Because the throw was too far for me. Wow. Right? Kyle was like, I don't know how tall he, Kyle would be, six foot one probably. He's not five so, foot he's one. He's got a anyway. long leg. He's, he's a lanky guy. He's taller yeah. than me. So... Uh, we made it work, and uh, I drove that car that night, and I got out, and I said, wow, I don't know what I was driving before, but it wasn't a race car. This is a race car. Is this car for sale? He said, yeah, it's for sale. I said, "It's." I just bought it. Okay. He says, it, this is, you know, I, don't, I won't tell you how much I paid for it, but, <laughs> you know, this is how much. And I thought, yeah, I don't have it, but I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. And one of my girlfriends said, well, what are we going to do? We're not going to be able to race at the Classic. And Ken said, well, you know, give me 500 bucks. We'll, we'll tow it up to the Classic for you. You can race it. And I looked at my friend. I said, 500 bucks. She goes, I do. No problem, Ken. We'll bring it up tomorrow. Great. So we gave him 500 bucks and he hauled that here for us. But I bought the late model off them and I used to keep my stuff in the shop. Um, Kyle stopped racing for a year, my first year at Sunset. And She's skipping past the point where she won the Oktoberfest. How can we skip oh, that? Yeah, sorry. So, okay, so what year would you have won Oktoberfest? Uh, 2000. I, okay. I brought the car here because um, I think we got rained, rained out. out at, so it was similar to Burned what's going on right hand, now. We're near the front. Okay. So, and they got rained out. I ran out and threw a blanket when it started to rain. They were in the lineup. Yeah, it was raining. And we, we threw but blankets. But we ran that one. No, you didn't. Yes, we did. We did because I finished third. First couple of racing, <laughs> right here. They they fight like every She's other right, couple. Man. Don't worry. I, I finished right third right because I, uh, know, I was running second for the longest time <laughs> behind. Uh, I think it was Hathaway, in that ridiculous like thirty thousand dollars undercar. Oh come, oh come on! Yeah, and, uh, oh come on! Thirty thousand, Jason? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> expensive car. Graham Anderson, who's, uh, who's a Jason Hathaway employee over here, nodding his head. Graham, how much was that car? Come on! I'm not, I'm not saying. It Graham Anderson off camera. Much. Does I'm, not want to answer. I'm not off here. Like I'm it was not thirty thousand. Anyway, you're in the ballpark. Anyways, thirteen-year-old uh, Pete Shepard uh, passed me. I think with two to go. That was, you know, what do you do? He's thirteen. Good lord. Uh, and then we went to Flamborough the next weekend and, and won Oktoberfest. But from there, I uh, I bought Kyle's late model, and, and Kyle stopped racing for a year. I can't remember the reason why. And Ken said, "You know what? We're we're gonna come and we're gonna we're gonna help you." And I was like, "Wow, really?" And that's true. I remember. You know, that. they you know Sandy would pack up sandwiches and write our names on them, and and the whole bit. And we would we would go to Sunset, and they Mike and Chris and and those guys all uh, Mike Rusher too, all those guys. Uh, came with us and you know we had a we had a good time we had lots of lots of success with him around for sure so so we had we have amanda <clears throat> and, and ken donaldson and ken donaldson the donaldson racing team is about one of the most exclusive groups if you, if you can get sort of inducted into that mm -hmm. circle i mean you're going to learn a lot in a very short uh period of time mm -hmm. 
the fact that you hit no stumbling blocks in the in your your three years of, of Thunder Car racing, is there almost is there one person you could sort of attribute that to? Not really. I mean, my, your dad. My dad is the guy. I mean, and he raised dirt. But when we were setting that car up and stuff, I mean, it was very. I don't even know the word to use. I mean, there was nothing fancy about it, but he knew enough that we went fast, and we were kind of, we were there every week, but we weren't right at the front for a year or two, and then Todd Balsam. Yeah, my cousin. Um, and it wasn't set up. It was gear. Yeah. Gear choice. We were uh, over Revenant, and we threw a, another gear in it at, at his suggestion, and it took a couple weeks to sort it out, but we went from... You know, fifth, sixth to first, second, third. You know, but the thing is, is, is what I always say to everybody is, as far as growing pains that you talked about, when we were in Thunder Car, there was a lot of cars, but there wasn't a lot of guys that, or girls that took it really serious. I mean, we had John Baker Jr. I mean, and, and John's John. I mean, he's good. Uh, Stan Tisnovsky, Rob Glenn, mm -hmm. guys that aren't around anymore. Pat Walworth. <clears throat> um, but we, Dad and I took it pretty serious from the get-go. So where I see the growing pain issue is that, and I always tell people, is there was lots of cars, but there was half a dozen guys that took it real serious. So I'm not saying it was easy. It wasn't easy, but... It was a different deal. The compete mm -hmm. level wasn't there. You moved into Challenger. I mean, I watched Kelly and, and uh, Barker and Woodward, and that's whose car I bought it was mm -hmm. uh, Derek Woodward. Um, and... 20, 25 car fields and really competitive good racing and, and that's where I wanted to be and of course the year I moved up there was a rule change yeah, and that hurt. it killed it. We were 9, 10 cars. <clears throat> um, so again the compete level went up but now there wasn't as many cars. So it, it just, I'm not trying to take anything away from anybody that was racing at the time but you know, they're just But I know that Mercer and I, sorry to interrupt no, no, please, no, absolutely. But that's why we that, have you here. <laughs> well, I also fit well down here. That's true. But uh, I know Merce and I ran one, two, or bouncing off each other. I don't know that we ever wrecked each other. I don't know if we ever even spun. I, that was later. In if that happened later, later, when you spun me in the classic <laughs> yeah, for the win. Yeah, that's right. I knew that was going to come up. That, 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 that was dirty. Actually, I totally okay. forgot about that. <laughs> However, um, it was you and I were one, two, but I always thought, okay, we're running for the championship. Clearly... Mercer or myself are going to win this championship. That's that was obvious. Agreed. Yep. I mean, but I, I used it almost as a year-long test session to when Moro and Watson and mm -hmm. and the big boys showed up. Vic. That I Vic, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and Jake the Snake. Yeah. When those dudes showed up, <clears throat> you knew the race was going to be on, and we got to compete with those guys, and we did. So you know, yeah. that's the way yeah, it was. that's that's the way it was, and and the thing was is, is and is we we moved into late models and. It wasn't like we just dabbled in a weekly show here. We we did. We ran here, but we also went right into All Star. And, and you look back on it now, and probably too much, too fast. You know, it, we, and that's where you're getting into the money. And now instead of half a dozen guys wanting to win, guys in late model, and like you said, getting school to Kortha. So you just said a few minutes. Ago, oh yeah, like absolutely. Now now these guys, the there's first nobody time, out there just messing around. The first time that I was pointing the wrong way, yeah. and I knew that I just got schooled, was at Corth in three and four, and Jeff had just schooled me. Jeff Hanley. Hanley. We're and big I'm, on last names here because yeah. Jeff's a pretty common name. So. Sure. And when I was, I, I I'm pretty sure he's probably passing me on the outside or whatever the gig was, but he came down and touched me on the right front and spun me. And I didn't know that was even possible. He, he's, he's keeping you pinched down, and that's cool, and I'm running as hard as I could do, and that's cool. And he just touched me on the right front, and I spun, and as I'm laying in the sod at Kortha, and it's wet and I can't get out, I remember thinking, yeah, I just got schooled, and that won't happen again. Next yeah. time, I'll know better. There was something about the Kortha grass. It was always wet. In it's the middle of right July, now. in the middle of July, oh. during during you know, if there hasn't been rain for five weeks, yeah. it, it's still wet, and yeah. your car will get stuck there. I don't know That's how. I almost did three weeks ago at the NASCAR at the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series race. We, it was wet. like it was quicksand. We got cars in there, then we got the tow Somebody truck cables are breaking, and yep. I don't know what it is, but there's a there's a black hole of of 
It's like uh, my socks. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Moist. That's that's a that's a hell of an answer. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. You come from a racing background. I Not know. really. Well, your father's a huge I, supporter of your program. Well, my dad was a drag racer and then a truck puller, so a motorsports background. So what I was going to say is, is, as far as setting up a car or running a racing line, I, I guess you could almost rule your dad out in, uh, of, of being a mentor. In, in the traditional sense of the word. I guess your dad's not gonna, he's not gonna tell you the best way to get off of turn two at Peterborough Speedway. No. So when you're breaking into the class. Since he looped it, the only time he drove it, when it hit hard in third <laughs> and sailed down the back straight backwards. And they're announcing, Kelly just looped it down. I'm, I'm in the grandstands going, no, I'm right here. <laughs> he's in the car. That was not me. That was not me. So who was the driver that, that, that you sort of leaned on without question i without speaking to him ever in my life was junior hanley we were coming here as a kid wednesday night super late model shows here at uh, westgate speedway at the time mm -hmm. and it was insane what was happening here on a wednesday night i was a kid i mean i was a little wee kid and hanley's here beaterman's here uh earl ross you know lynch date like uh Dave lynch. Dave. you knew I, I was a young kid and you knew it was on. This is huge. And obviously Hanley was the man. And being the front running bandwagon jumping guy I am. I was a 72 fan. And when we went and rented go-karts and everything. I'm Hanley. I'm Hanley. And, and that was a big thing. You can't be Hanley because I'm Hanley. So, you know, I was a big junior fan. And, and then later on in life to work with him or talk to him and, you know, get him to do a few things for you. That was something. Now, so is it you just try to pattern yourself after his driving style or no not really i see the thing is my, my whole family the balson family is a motorsports family and merce can back me up on that my cousin todd my uncles my dad they're all motorsports guys they're engine guys they're chassis guys they're fabricator guys they're borderline some of them geniuses mm -hmm. um I've always said, my dad will tell you, if we had a got our family online, meaning get them online with a with a race car program, we could have been a Shaw type family where the whole family's working towards <coughs> one goal, and it might have been something. But they had their own motorsports endeavors, and so you know they things, th and they still do. Yeah, mm -hmm. it still happens mm -hmm. to this day. Um, but. I forget where I was going with this, but I... I Watching Junior Hamlin. Well, yeah, but if we could have got them online, we, we could have had something earlier on, but we, we they, they had their own deal going on. Again, I don't know where I was going with this. I asked if you would pattern yourself after <laughs> Junior Hamlin's driving style. You told me about your family's background in racing. Yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't really pattern myself. Up. Well, it's, what is it, Wednesday at the Classic? You can't be, expect me to be totally focused here. But anyway, I, I don't remember exactly where I was going with that, but I did have a point. It's gone now. The answer is no, he did not pattern himself after Junior Hamlin. See, I Hamlin's always up. watch Tom, because Ken said, if you're going to watch anybody, you get up to that fence, and when every time that 47 goes out, you get up there and you watch. Okay. And this is when I was in Thundercar, even. So I, I think there, there'd probably be a, a long list of drivers that are winning races now <laughs> that probably kept a real, or, or still keep a real close eye on the 47 car. If you, oh, if you go to Sunset yeah. at an Invitational, we just had the Velocity a couple of weeks back. Yeah. Oh. You see that the, when that 47 car, he doesn't go out for every session, but when he goes out on the track, you see a lot of drivers that are going to be there. racing against him yeah. at the fence, keeping an eye. What's he doing? Where's he putting his car on the track? How's he getting off the corner? So it, it, he's well, just... Well, they're all up there with the clock. That, it, absolutely. Just watching, because that's the high watermark Same right there. With Bentley. Mm -hmm. Without question. Mike Bentley's another one. Yeah. When you go to Flamborough, it's Paul House and Jason Shaw. Right. When you go to Delaware, you know, nowadays it's Matt Pritico and Jamie Cox. You just, mm -hmm. You're just one of those guys that... You have to keep an eye on. <clears throat> With all of you sort of breaking into the industry roughly at the same time in the same division, I'll ask: Did the Thunder Cars at the time, back in the in the we'll say in the mid '90s, mm -hmm. the affordability of the class, the availability of the cars, did it lend itself to young racers getting into the into the industry better than the mini stocks do right now? I, I'll bet you when when I started Thunder Car Racing, it was probably cheaper then than it is to get into a mini stock right now. And be competitive. Yes, I recognize I you can buy a mini stock for two grand and go racing, but it's probably not going to work out well for you. Um, I, I paid forty five hundred dollars for my first Thunder car. Um, they're not like they are today. You're not turning low bolts. 
you're not, you know, change, the, the amount of things that are being changed on the now, like we had to run a stock shock, like we had big 1050 springs in the front, like it, it, they were so simple. You could go from track to track. You, you didn't have to change. We certainly didn't. You don't change shocks and springs and so you don't need all this spare stuff. It, it's, I don't know why there wasn't more younger people getting involved back then. I mean, I guess it's just money, right? I mean, everything changes with the times, but uh, I, I think it was easier back then. I mean, I don't, I don't know that I would have been able to start today the way being 18, um, you know, funding everything virtually myself. Uh, I don't think I could start today the way things are. Um, needing a, a ten thousand dollar mini stock to, to run up front because let's face it. Do you think that's what it takes, though? I, yeah. I believe that 10, the ones that are winning, yep. it's it's you're in that stock, neighborhood. It's proven yep. over and over again. You're, you're at least ten thousand. I think mm. people are having purpose built mini stocks now. It's yep. insane. Yep. And it's not it's, doing anything for them. I, I, personally, no. I mean, it's, I don't want to piss don't off. Stop I don't want to piss off the entire mini stock community. But nope. it's a front wheel drive car, and you're spending ten thousand dollars on it. It's doing nothing for you. When's the last time you saw someone leave a mini stock other than Brandon? But Brandon's an anomaly. Brandon Watson um, is a special case. Brandon is extremely talented. Love Brandon. Huge fan. Um, but besides that, when's the last time you saw someone dominate the mini stock? Because it happens all the time. They move up a class. What happened? What yep. happens? I find that the mentality in mini stock is that a lot of fast drivers enjoy being a big fish in a small pond. You know, whether it's if they don't have the money to move up or there's just no interest to move up. I mean, I could think of a, it's, it's a multi-time so autumn pro classic so champion big, that has no interest in moving well, up. Well, I don't know if that's a big fish, <clears throat> small pond scenario so much as it is it's a different animal yep. and there's all kinds of room and then all of a sudden things get a little squirrely. Again, I'll, what Amanda just said, other than Brandon going up, I'm, I'm thinking back to Mike Wallace yep. who yep. was... Perfect example. Was, uh, Perfect. was winning championships here at the little what track, two time champion, and at the yeah. court, and at court, and the down the road, yep. mm -hmm. um, it took him a while to, you know, acclimate himself to a late model. And that's not a surprise. Different it's different. a completely it's different, different animal. You're not going to take anything you've earned and, and move, move. And on. this is Mike Wallace, in that the Wallace family is yep. a, a more historic family. You know, you'd be tough to find with, you know, grandfather Gordy and Gordy and, and then Kim. Yep. We're talking super late model yep. champions here. So if it's tough for Mike, it's likely harder for everybody the thing, else. The thing mm -hmm. is, is what's the answer? There's no other answer for an entry level car anymore. <coughs> no, not really. It's, no, you're right. It's already so we enter our all the way. We wheelbarrow just, racing. We just went in a big, huge circle because yeah. Thunder cars used to be affordable. You used to be able to but get the, going for five thousand. That's right. But the then thing is, now there's no old great. cars around anymore, so yeah, you've got to go to a purpose built right, chassis. Right, I mean, right. it's. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't know. I either. have these conversations with plenty of people, and and the, you know everybody's up against the the purpose built McCall Thunder Car Super Stock whatever uh, CSC you know whatever it may be. But I hate talking about rules. No. I, know. I hate it. But I also know Willie Ryan's from <laughs> back home. I believe he had to go and buy. I won't throw He's a number out there, yeah. but too much to get a roof. <laughs> I think Dan McCaddy dropped yeah. dropped the figure in in volume eight of bench racing, and it, it was over two. Well, I'm not. I, 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 for what? Yeah. For to, just to, to buy a car because he needed the steel roof. Yeah. To oh, go and yeah. race the Kimmel series. Yeah. Like, sure. I mean, that's throwing numbers out there because it's not it's not up to me to do that, but it's just ridiculous. But yeah, I, I don't, What's the answer? Like, can you go to a wrecking yard and get a, a Camaro car? Or, or a, a I think you've tried it hard enough. You can, yeah. yeah. I mean, Dan I think Price finds fifty-seven Chevy somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I mean, well, but, but it was I, also yeah. getting hard to find Camaro clips like that was right. ten years ago. Exactly. Like, and people wanted as much money for them as you could get one from, you know, Port City. <laughs> so, yeah. when all of a sudden people want three, yeah. four hundred dollars for Camaro but, clips, but yeah, I, I get that, and I don't know the answer, but I think that's the, the, the mini stock class. I don't know what the answer is for entry level. But I agree with the man 100%. That is insane. It's, it's a lot. I think it started the problem. Or, or start of the solution, sorry, mm -hmm. is is the crate motor, still is. I'm still yep. a big proponent of it. Yep. Um, it's a cost-saving thing. And I got, you and I have talked this ad nauseum. I'm not going to, if ACT had it took over, I think we'd be in a better place than we, we had a conversation last mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been, we're going to be in a better spot. Yep. Now, maybe something along those lines could happen with Thundercar, where we can get maybe the chassis in line at a certain <coughs> uh, price range. And but now you're dealing with pretty much a spec car, but maybe that's the way that to things the need yeah. to go. But again, I just I just despise into. talking rules. It you can do it all night long. 
And we, you're never going to get anywhere. We could be sitting in this motorhome 15 years from now. We're going to be doing the same thing. Yeah. We did it 15 years ago. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but you know, and we're still... You know what? I Like, I think, like the biggest problem with like these cars that are McCall cars, these fabricated cars, mm -hmm. you know what you're losing? You're losing dads and sons uh, building cars, getting yeah. a car from the junkyard. Very good Family point. is coming... Very good racing point. is family like look you're here with your parents yep. we're you know like it's family that's where it starts and we're losing that we're losing that yep. we're, we're we're all of a sudden getting you know wealthy people coming in and writing a check and building a car and that's it and, and that, you're, but you're losing that, that is you're, where it's at you're losing that part and, of it, and you're 100 you know? right but again i know what do you do i, lo I look it? back to say 98 when dave morgan won the all-star championship yep. in a jimmy ward car Dave did most of the work in his own shop, set up everything. Um, Tom we was, booed him merciless, <laughs> mercilessly. Tom was driving a Ward car, um, yeah. and it wasn't too many years after that. Then, and, I, and I'm not going to say anything bad because I got him a call car, but Mike got in the game, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's either a Mike McCall car, a Jeff Hanley car, a Junior car. Port City. Port yeah. City. The <laughs> only guy really anymore, I think think that can get it all done right in his own shop is Dan. And Sean. McWhorter. Dan McHattie. Dan McHattie. Yeah. 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 I'm talking guys I know down around this way. And Streamline Race Products, I think, are the yeah. only two independents left yeah. in, in the traditional sense of the word. Right. Mm -hmm. I, where it's not a great big gigantic conglomerate. Where you don't have a list of an employees. Empire. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, what I'm getting at is, is you're not, you're, you're, I know Dan isn't like Mike. But you're still going to him a lot of the time to get, you know. All the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to Mike. Mm -hmm. I mean, And I have to just... force Dan in, in, through a series of blackmail <coughs> techniques. I have to get him to work on my car. Because he's so busy. And, and, yeah. he, and it's one of those things where Chris's car works well. Clearly, Dan's cars have been, have been working well for, you know, a million years. Shout yeah. out to handsome Chris Mitchell. <laughs> and, uh, and I had a keys earlier. He's lucky he got him back. I told him, you're not getting back till Monday, you can't race, I got your keys. <laughs> um, when Dan's cars start to work well, Dan's cars always work good. People want Dan to build more cars. They want him to work on his cars. He's just one dude. Yeah. He's got yeah. a family, he's got a job. It's tough for Dan to say, okay, well, I'm going to take uh, more days off and somehow build you another car. Like I, Sudsy wants to be a DMR guy. And I think that's going to happen. And we're, we're kind of sure on that. I mean, Sudsy's supposed to be here right now. Brian Sudsbury. Yeah. And uh, I just, you know, Dan yeah, well, is there, one man. He, it, there's yeah. a downside to that, too, because sometimes you can wreck your car, and Dan has a full-time job and a family that, to look out for. So I made this very, very clear. I'm sorry time, to interrupt. This is the last time I'm going to open my mouth in this kind of <laughs> scenario. But when, when Dan was building the limited late model for me, I made it very clear that Dan is building this limited late model for me under the understanding that I'm only going to run it part-time. If I were to twist up a clip, take your time fixing it. And I made it very clear, mm -hmm. if I'm running on a full-time basis at Sunset or Peterborough, I'd have to be a McCall guy. Because there's a factory of... Yeah. Yes. Uh, an assembly was, line of clip fixing. That's what I was just going to say. I mean, and that... Yeah, that right. And I'll be the first to say, I, I probably pay more to get my stuff done. Um, no question, but again, I don't know if you is, do or don't. I don't know that. I, I don't I find don't I don't find him unreasonable at all. To be perfectly honest, to be perfectly honest, I think you might be paying less. Yeah, N um, not than Dan. Yeah, I mean I can't force money on the man. Yeah, <laughs> you know. But it, that is the advantage. I mean, the first year I got the car, I yeah. mean, uh, I was you, you blew up uh, right in front of me, and and water on the track, and Link and I both stuffed it in the fence. Where? Uh, at Cortha. Cortha. Really? Yeah. yeah. And uh, the car was back midweek. I mean, that is oh, one advantage. God. I mean, he's got a, a full staff, and it's, it's an assembly line of race cars. Yeah, so and sometimes that's what you need. Yeah, if yeah. you're running for points, and, and that's what know, I'm getting at. And that's what you just said. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I, it's uh, there's positives and negatives to both ends of it. Oh, ends of it. I think incredibly insightful discussion. I know we're we're really long on time, so I want to thank. The first couple of Ontario short track racing, <laughs> Kelly Balson and Amanda Conley, for, for the lavish digs here to shoot uh, episode number 12. It's greatly appreciated. I want to thank the silverback, Brian Mercer, for allowing us to twist his arm into being here. You offered up some good stories. 
we found out that you were a, you were a natural in Thunder Car and you <laughs> late model not so much, but you found your footing now. Yeah. You got a, how many podiums do you have at the Autumn Colors Classic? In a you late have model? any? A few. No, he's got a few. He's you always. Are you kidding not a, me? Not a few, but I do have some. He's always there. He would have You're always there. me in '98 or whatever oh, the hell it was. Let's not go there. That was bad. <laughs> All bad. Now I've never felt worse. Now at this time, I normally plug the Twitter handles, but I know Kelly is still still has the phone mounted on the wall in the kitchen. Uh, I send her smoke signals. Yeah, he, no Twitter there. Amanda, no, I'm not on your, Twitter. Are you on Twitter now? Yeah. Do I really? follow you on Twitter? I have been for a long time. I need to follow you I on Twitter. What's I'm, your Twitter handle? I'm 16 racer. Follow her on Twitter. <laughs> how many how many followers do you have? I didn't 